All right. I had a big class today. I just finished the outline for the non duality uh, year and uh, was getting some major, major chill bumps there. Uh, I was just saying, Susan, that it is recording. Uh, <laughs> that uh, I was just getting some major chills as I was writing all the finishing up the outline for the non duality class um, this next year. So um, I want to jump in just because I know people will be kind of joining and I'm, I know I'm going to use the whole hour today. So a lot is is coming up, obviously, as we kind of wrap up this alchemy idea. And before I kind of jump into the topic of our class that kind of ends this year, I want to kind of remind everybody that the purpose of this masterclass of alchemy was really about understanding that alchemy is all of me, right? Not my family, not my money, not my time, you know, not my government, but the aspects of me that all seem to have different opinions about all those things, right? So the you who who literally, you know, studies and practices your spiritual rituals and routines, and those of you who are teachers and practitioners, and those of you who find yourself on the tables of practitioners quite a bit, you know that that is your safe space. You know that that is where you feel the best about yourself. That is where your hope returns, your abundance is right here, your freedom is at your fingertips and your knowledge is expanded. But really this, this world that we're living in is that that spiritual feeling, the dopamine, the rush, the oxytocin, the connection, was designed to be embodied and integrated in the parts of your life that don't feel like that, okay? So it's it's one thing to, to run and hide into that spiritual realm and feel amazing, but it is quite another to bring that feeling into the hell that you were born into, all right? And I call it hell because it is separation, it is misunderstanding, it is disconnect, it is denial, it's rejection, it's abandonment, it's um, not seen, not heard, not safe, not loved. So when you can bring that lighter part of you into this dark world that we have embodied and incarnated in, then that's truly when you're gonna start to become the master. I was listening to a story about a monk, a Tibetan monk that spent um, 15 hours a day in meditation for years and years and years and probably accelerated what we have done on this planet, maybe 100 or 50 years, you know, they he did in 15 years, but he stayed in the stillness. He was um, around uh, like-minded influence. He was away from the, the struggles of humanity and money and his needs, although very little and minimal, were provided, right? And he still discussed this hell. He still discussed what hell it was to be still in this mess, in this feeling. He still felt what we were all feeling. So he was on this journey with us as if he was watching a movie, right? You go on an emotional journey when you watch a movie. You cry with them, you laugh with them, you get mad with them. And so in his deep meditation in 15 years, he basically went through humanity of 100 or 50 years and saw and experienced and held space. And I thought that was quite interesting because I'm sure that is what our higher self is experiencing from the other side of the veil, holding that stillness in place for you, right? The you that's like, I'll go down and be in the front line. I've got this. Crazy parents, no problem, right? Me forgetting I'm God, I've got this. I'll remember because when you ask, it's given, right? And it's got to be real dark if I'm going to shine, right? You can't see the stars in the light. So surround me with darkness, I'm ready. And that is what happened, right? And we got our feelings hurt and we developed um, a shit ton of baggage and trauma and our bodies started to become heavy and slow until we 
hit our head enough and questioned and had many, many tantrums and life crises and dark nights of the soul and midlife crises and um, rock bottoms to finally smack ourselves awake. And we all believe that this awakened place within us is heaven, but it's only the feeling. It's only the reminder. It's only the remembrance. It's only the connection to heaven that makes us feel that we know that we are because it is who we truly are as a bigger, bigger being. But we have been broken apart here. And some of us that are taking this class have been fractaled and broken for thousands of years here, working and recycling and working and recycling incarnations to move slightly ahead if the you know, world of hell doesn't devour the very soul that you have here. Now, usually in every lifetime, a bit and piece of you connects with source, whether it's through a puppy or a cloud or a song or someone who was kind to you. That piece of you will always find the light. And that piece of you goes back to the light after this incarnation, while the rest of the heavier part of you remains and picks up exactly where they left off. So the family that you were born into, and I know you don't want to hear this, but the family that you were born into was where you left off, at least the darker parts of you. The lighter parts of you are the ones that question, why are these my parents? <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? And uh, this is not my home. This is not my world. This is not who I am, right? But the part of you that attracted not only the parents, but the bloodline, the ancestry, right? The gender is all part of not only your karma, but your dharma. And to understand that, you have to go understand that you are here to resolve and create. You are here for a very specific purpose, and it is very much unified within your own soul. You are not here to save humanity because there is only one being. You are here to find and reconnect and integrate with the lost pieces of your own soul. Now, the lost pieces of your own soul, you will find through triggers, heartbreak, separation, abandonment, and rejection. You will find these pieces of the darkest parts of you in hunger, starvation, lack, separation, and darkness. These parts of you, you do not find in the honeymoon effect. The, you do not find these pieces when things are comfortable. You do not find these pieces when you are feeling loved and accepted. So if you're like me, <laughs> treasure hunter, alchemist, I'll turn the lead into gold. You have, again, over and over and over again, put yourself into situations to find yourself in the darkness. But because you are the remembrance, the fractal, the spark, the son or extension or the daughter of God itself, you are fully equipped with whatever hell that you find yourself in. You have what it takes with what you have, what you know, and who you are. You do not have to put yourself at rest and go search for the answer outside of you. This is what further disconnects you from yourself. The source is only, this disconnection of source is your root wound. It isn't losing mommy or daddy. You could have cared less. What you are mourning and what you are haunted by is your disconnection of source. When you incarnated, you had that connection. And slowly over the next seven years of your first cycle, that, that connection to source was disconnected until you had to create and alter part of you to help you navigate down here and keep you safe and attached because the connection appeared to be severed. You found yourself feeling lonely, scared, fearful, your self-esteem, non-existence, your body as it changed, you had no idea why, no one to ask, for help, even if you did have great parents, 
And then you started to be abused because of the innate asking within your soul. You came here fully worthy, fully deserving, fully safe in your connection to source, and fully free through the connection of source. But as that source connection began to appear to be disconnected through the word no, through humiliation, judgment, right? Ridicule, guilt, shame, right? Grief of losing things um, and, of, and losing yourself and ultimately fear of uncertainty and the unknown. You began to look outside of you for a resolve to all of those feelings. You begin to attach to people, places, and things, and identities, and religions, and people, like, you know, groups of people. You began to search for anything that felt like that source. At the root of any addiction that you find yourself in is the addiction is nothing more than it felt like source wants. It felt like source wants. It may never feel that way again, but you continue to use it. You continue to do it. You continue to find it. You continue to buy it because of that original connection. But once the brain has had that connection, it needs more if it's not authentic. It needs a bigger hit, a bigger shopping spree, a bigger piece of cake, a better partner, a bigger house, a bigger paycheck. Because originally, the hit of the dopamine that your brain is now searching for felt like connection. And now you're chasing that connection instead of chasing source within. So the alchemy process is about finding the parts of you that are disconnected from source with the parts of you connected to source. That's what you've been studying for 30 years is your connection to source, the part of you that can channel, the part of you that has the intuition when you're alone, that feels whole, that knows it's free, the sovereign being holding space for humanity is the part of you that can reconnect the darker parts of you to source. Because those parts of you that have fallen away are nothing more than shreds of glass. Like I said, it's like a big vase that is shattered. The bigger pieces, you can make out what it is. You know, oh, that's going to be a vase, right? That has a purpose. That's worthy of keeping because when we can put it all back together, right? But what about the tiny shreds of glass that are hidden in the corner that when you step on them, you cut and you bleed and you curse God, right? Those shreds are equally worthy, equally deserving, and equally important to create the vase, the vase, the God spark, the unified field of the soul and spirit the Holy Spirit, okay? The idea that you are one within yourself, those shreds are extremely important. And I bet you this year, if you're like me, those are the pieces you keep stepping on, okay? Those are the pieces that you are discovering in your relationships, in your work, in your health, in your time, right? And in your dreams, in your hopes, in your purpose, in your relationships, you're finding those shreds this year. But that is a good thing because that means that you've put the vase mostly together, right? And it's starting to take shape and you're starting to understand. And this is why it feels like it's getting harder because those little shreds make you complete. But those shreds hurt the most because those are the shreds that have been lost for who knows how many thousands of years away from you, and they don't recognize you. You don't recognize them either because it's like if you've ever done a big, big puzzle and you see a, a shape that you can't make out or you don't know where it goes, it feels like it doesn't even belong, right? Because it's so disconnected from the storyline but put in the right place makes the whole thing come together. That's alchemy. 
And when that is together, you become the alchemist, the one who is the miracle, the walking miracle, the walking magic, the one who is truly creating their reality from the three brains within you, the mind, the heart, the gut, right? The body is the magnetic principle of your vibration here. The body represents the inner child. It is the baby that you made with your masculine and feminine energy. You made this body out of your own masculine and feminine energies. And in your brain, the two hemispheres is the mother father energy that made the baby. So when you neglect this, abuse this, deny this, right? Disassociate from this, ignore this, punish this, right? Leave behind this for the outside world. You create karma within yourself. You're adding time to your timeline. You're adding work to your journey. You're adding uh, disconnection that you're going to have to reconnect. But I get it. We have to do this for a long time because this is the way it's taught. Disconnect from yourself and love everyone until there is nothing left in you that you literally dropped it. You will die in resentment and as the martyr. Good luck. Welcome to humanity. All right. And in that way, we believe that we are doing the right thing by abandoning ourselves. As a mother, there has been times where I have had to go without for my children. There is times where I have had to go without to make sure that they were okay. But there has also been times where I had to leave people and places and things out to make sure my child was okay. Now, when we start doing that, all hell breaks loose in the third dimension. When you start to choose the health of your inner child, when you start to choose the needs of your beingness, this is when the world begins to reject you all over again. This is when the world begins to abandon you. And it is the best thing that could happen to you. Because when the world abandons you and your relationship abandons and rejects you, then you are only left to tend to the child. And that is what higher self will use over and over and over and over again so that you will come home and raise your child. You will be abandoned and rejected by everything that is stealing your focus away from thyself. And that could be money. That could mean time. That could mean health. Or that could mean a person, place, or thing. Higher self does not care what it has to take away from you so that you will return home and raise your child the correct way. So non-duality is about reparenting. Non-duality is about taking a mess and turning it into a masterpiece. It is about taking shit, treating it like fertilizer and learning to grow through it. It is not at all about choosing sides, judgment, safety, and, and lack of being free here. It is all about taking the rest of the hardships that you have left to work through and using them intentionally as if they are the next step. There is no more stops. There is no more blocks. There is no more no. The universe has always, always, always been yes. Yes to your lack. Yes to your suffering. Yes to your separation. Yes to any addiction you can create. Because higher self knows that it will use the addiction to get you back to yourself eventually. It will use the abandonment to get you home. It doesn't matter because you believe that you are walking in a linear path from past, present, future, and you are working through a spiral. You will return over and over again to the scene of where you abandoned and rejected yourself, and you will meet some sort of child. You will meet the bad seed. You will meet the neglected. You will meet the tired, the ugly, the abused, the starving. 
the enraged, the crying, the terrified, you will meet this child probably a few times a month right now because the timeline is increasing. The photonic energy on planet Earth is accelerating your consciousness. It is pushing you into greater points of awareness. Pretty soon, you won't be able to get it away from yourself. Pretty soon, you're going to see a mirror everywhere you go. Pretty soon, it is going to be impossible to refuse your journey because nothing is working the same. You can't get the dopamine hit anymore off of the outside world the way you could before. You cannot sustain a third dimensional job when you are not from here. You cannot make money in a third dimensional reality of rules, judgment, and slavery and mastery. You are here to be a unified sovereign being. And there are at least 13 principles of the sovereign being that I will take you guys through this year in the non-duality workshops and classes. Because again, to become a sovereign being means self-sustainable, self-governorship, right? You're pissed at the government, hold a mirror to your face. You are at war with only yourself. And when we are separated, we hand over our power willingly and we say, take it. I can't and cannot be responsible. But because I'm letting you take it, it gives me the right to judge you how you do it. So the judgment that you have had in your heart all of these years has been nothing more than self-preservation. You have been trying to keep yourself safe from your own abandonment and your own rejection. It's from your own good. And now that we are awakening into this new timeline, we are realizing, just give me the reins. I, I would be the better president. Give me the opportunity because you have connected with the bigger part of, part of that vase now, and you're looking through and for your shreds. You may not think you're looking for the shreds, but you are, because you are at the end. You are not at the beginning of this. If you can hear this voice and you've been in this class, you are not at the beginning of this bridge. If you are at the beginning of this bridge, you just found Abraham Hicks, and you're searching for relief right now. And there is a time and place for that. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus that they are here. Okay. But if you can hear my voice, you are not at the beginning. You are at the end. So you are looking for the shreds and they hurt the most. All right. They are not easy and you are not complete without them. You can distract yourself for months and then it will take you months to get back. Because as above is below. Yin and yang are becoming one. The lines between dark and light are blurred. There is no right, there is no wrong when you are sovereign being, which means the rules and guidelines of your freedom and abundance will always be win-win in self-governorship. You will not take someone's power for your own enlightenment. In 5D, when you are a fully sovereign being, vibrating the same frequency embodied as higher self, your manifestations will always be win-win. No one loses in heaven. Every reaction has a purpose, has a place, has a teaching. When you get on the other side of right and wrong, you will understand that you have had to abandon people to help wake them up. You have had to reject people to give them their power back. You have had to be abandoned. You've had to be rejected. You had to let go. <clears throat> you had to clear your throat, right? Can you tell I'm working through that one right now? <clears throat> ah. This is why I'm having to do more uh, vocal work lately because you can see where it's getting stuck. All right. <clears throat> so this, this understanding here, hopefully it's making sense. It doesn't mean you found your shreds yet, okay? You've probably found at least good five or six this year and it has not been pleasant. It doesn't mean your financial situation has improved. It does not mean that you found your relationship. That does not equal success. 
All right. One thing that if I leave you with this year that that really took a toll on me this year was the definition of success is not how much money is in your account or who is by your side or what you have been able to create or finish this year physically. The success and bounty of this year is integrating those lost parts of you. That is your greatest success this year. And if you have done that the slightest bit, you are winning, you are thriving. The whole heavens and universe is clapping for you. Because see, when we have success outside of us and we have victory and money and people who say they love us, we don't have to look within. We don't have to make sure that the child is doing okay. We can throw money at it. We can throw pills. We can throw women or men, right? We can throw food, homes. But if you ever have been a parent or you know, whether that's a real parent to a, not a real parent, but a parent to a child, physical, or a dog, or a plant, you know they could care less what's in your bank account. They want your attention, your time. So those parts of you that have been lost away from you the longest are the parts of you that you do not recognize and they don't recognize you. This is going to be found in the things outside of you that you hate the most, the things that disgust you, the things that scare and terrify you. Why do you think that, although I truly believe that the, the Hollywood experience that is created in our hologram at the root is quite evil, if we're going to use like dark and light here, higher self always uses every outlet for non-duality. Inside every dark point of the universe is light. And movies have been the story of our soul since the very beginning. And so movies designed to suck you in are also designed to awaken you because it's non-duality here. We have just been living in duality because that's what we were taught. If a child in the same third dimensional reality was taught, hey, there's no such thing or bad or good. If you step in a pile of shit, use it that child would be fully enlightened by the time they were seven. But we weren't taught that way. We were taught that our own insecurities were the things we needed to hide from the world. And so year by year, we buried them more and more and more and more until we forgot they were there. We forgot they were there until three months into our relationship. We forgot they were there until three months into our new job. We forgot they were there until the bank account went dry or the disease showed up. We forgot that we buried these parts because they were shamed and guilted. And now you have to re-experience shame and guilt to vibrate next to them. They are remaining in the vibration where they were left. In order to find the shreds of glass Your soul must vibrate the feeling that they are haunting in. So if they are cold and alone and bitter and terrified and suffering in pain, you will find yourself in that vibration. And if you find yourself in that vibration from a non-dualistic space, say, Eureka, I'm here. I'm here to pick you up and take you home. And this sucks. How could you be living like this? I have so much compassion for you. Let's go home. Okay. And I have created the biohacking physical expectation and physical space to do that in. I take you into those dark, cold, freezing, scary, very painful places so that you may meet the parts of you that you have been left behind and have left you behind. And it is not fun, right? It's not fun doing it and it's not fun holding space for it, but it is so, so rewarding, right? Just like sometimes you don't wanna jump in the shower or you don't wanna go to the gym, but you never regret either one of those. 
you're never like, man, I wish I wouldn't have showered or I wish I wouldn't have gone to the gym today. It doesn't matter how much it sucks. When you do it from a non-dualistic place, you look at pain differently. You look at pain the same as you look at love. It's a recognition. Pain is a recognition of loss. Love is a recognition of found. And that is why when you fall in love with someone, you are not falling in love with them. You are falling in love with the very frequency of your own soul that is being channeled through them for you. You do not love them. You love the you that you get to be with them. You love the parts of you that you get to share in those relationships. You never, ever, ever mourn or lose anyone on this planet. The only thing that you lose is your physical connection to them because energy doesn't die, changes forms. So if you are mourning that grandparent or mourning your father or mourning your mother, then the only thing that you're truly mourning is your own intuition because your intuition could talk to them right now. Your intuition could see them right now. Your intuition could learn from them right now in a way that you could not do embodied because they had a physical ego that separated you. So you are never mourning the loss of someone. You are mourning the loss of your intuitive ability to see them now. So you are actually only ever mourning your connection to source. Think about the source of your desire right now. What is the source of your desire? Is the source of your desire coming from lack? Is the source of your desire right now coming from pain? Like your desire to not feel pain is coming from pain. Your desire to have money is coming from lack. Your desire to heal that disease is coming from trauma and pain and suffering and separation. Because desire was never meant to come from lack. Desire was about demonstrating the soul's truth. I desire a big house. Why? Because my soul needs a big house and lots of space because I'm giant. Not because I want to feel better about myself, because I want success, because I want safety from the world. If you do not know the source of your desire, then there are still pieces that are calling you home. So you won't get the big house. You'll get a big chunk of glass in your foot. All right. You will not get the job or the position that you desire if it is not going to lead you to the glass. So if whatever is pulling you forth right now is taking you home, some of you guys have been homesick your whole lives and you can't place it. Some of you have felt lost. Some of you felt like you don't fit in anywhere your whole life. Tune in to those parts that don't fit in anywhere because that is what you're looking for. Tune in to the homeless you, the motherless you, the fatherless you, the intuitiveless you, the broken you, the abandoned you, the rejected you, you in verse. This is why movies are so therapeutic because not only do you have the, and able to create the observer effect. See, when you watch a movie, you are observing yourself from a different timeline if that movie engages you. If it interests you at all, it's for you. If it terrifies you, for you. If it's neutral and bored, you probably integrated it. Books are the same way. It's the observer. You can go on a journey without having the judgment, without having the, well, this is my story, so I can't outthink it. You can see someone else go through it, and therefore it's a teaching moment. The same way that I have not been able to integrate aspects of me without working with you. Because inside of you, I find me. And this is why the soul loves to be of service. Because there's parts of you that you cannot find if you don't teach. So you are never a fraud and you are never a beginner. You've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years or you wouldn't be on earth, which is the master class. 
Earth is the living library where all things are allowed. So this is where the shit goes down. Other places, it's easier, trust me. If you're here, you're a master, maybe in disguise, maybe with amnesia, but you're a master. And you will eventually get awakened through pain because pain is your first teacher. Love is your second teacher. Pain will lead you to love. If you are a mother and your children are in pain, you have had the thought, I will take that pain because I love you. If you have seen someone in need, you will say, how can I help them relieve that? That's love. Love isn't about being trapped and obligated to your commitments and your obligations of who you were eight years ago. That's not love. Love is not rescuing people at your own expense. It is not making a ton of money so that you can feel safe. It is not isolating yourself because your empathy feels abused. It is about putting yourself out there every day in uncomfortable situations and figuring out who you are in the mud. It is not about comfort here. And I will tell you, even on the other side, as you move into the fifth dimension, it is not comfortable. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't know how to be a butterfly. You've always dreamed of it. You've wanted it. You've desired it. You've dreamed about it. You've written about it. But to actually have the wings where you could go or stay and you don't know where to go or how to stay, it is just as terrifying, but a lot more thrilling. You have a lot more possibilities, a lot more options, but you don't desire to be down there with the people who still choose to be caterpillars, but you don't necessarily know any other butterflies yet. And because you're a beginner, you don't know how to fly really well, don't know how to navigate, and you're still unlearning, unlearning, unlearning the caterpillar reality inside of its own mind because the body is showing up differently. So it's not easier, but I will tell you, it's a lot more thrilling and the possibilities and potentials are a lot more exciting. See, in desire, while you guys are chasing your carrot, you're not really being triggered because you're chasing something. And if, if you're chasing something, that means something's chasing you, which means you're probably running away from something if you're chasing something. And so as long as you're moving, right, you don't really ever notice it. But when you arrive and everything stops and the past slaps into you and the future is like, what are you going to do with me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully by, by that point, there's enough integrated selves that you can have a family meeting and decide what the hell you want to create. Okay, what are we going to do? We've got all of this potential in our darkness. Darkness is literally untapped potential. It's unloved beingness. That's it. It's unloved consciousness vibrating in grief. Victim mentality equals I am grieving. Anger and rage, I am afraid of my grief, okay? The, the lowest human vibration on earth plane is grief. It's loss, it's fear of loss, it's disassociation. So the, the worst, icky, disgusting monsters that you can dream up here are literally in grief, right? I, I had a snap at my son a little bit this morning because, you know, he didn't take the trash out, right? And you ask him three times and he doesn't do it. And so me, hormonal, right? It's my moon time. Watch out. I only usually snap about once a month, okay? I'm in the car and he, I turn around and it's 28 degrees and he has no jacket on. And I flip the car around and I drive back home and I said, buddy, it's 28 degrees and you have to stand outside before the bell rings for 10 minutes. He's like, I don't care. And I said, well, I do care. I do care about your body being too cold. So we're going to take the time and then we're going to do this. And then I opened the garage door and the trash has been taken out. So that was a fun conversation. So he got that ramp that lasted probably about a minute. Okay. And my, and, and, and my, um, my, my roars are, are more like a mouse at this point, but you know, he's the sensitive being who, if he feels I am disappointed in him, that just shakes his world. So I took the pause 
and we got to school and we had a few minutes and I said, I just want you to know that anger is actually sadness. I'm not angry at you, but sometimes I get sad. And sometimes when I get sad and I don't want you to see me cry, yelling is easier. So I just want you to know that I'm sad. And so he started to cry. He says, well, I'm sad too. And I said, good, then we can just both be sad now. We don't have to hide around anger. I don't want your body to be cold. That's why I got mad. Isn't that silly? He was like, yeah. And I go, but that's life. When people are mad at you, it's usually because they're sad. They're sad about themselves or they're sad about you. And so he said, so this is why my dad is mad all the time because he doesn't know how to be sad. I said, it's not very manly to be sad, is it? And he was taught in a different generation that he was not, he had to be a man. So when you see your dad having road rage out there, it's actually because he's sad. He's sad that he doesn't have the power to provide and build a new world. And he can take it out on the drivers that he drives with. Because humanity is all sad right now. We're sad that we can't create our realities when we know how to do it. We're sad that we cannot provide and build this new world the way we thought we were going to be able to do it. But the sadness and the anger will bring us into ourselves so that we can find and parent properly our lost, sad, angry, hurt, Selves. So, whatever you guys are growing through this year, you are growing because none of you have given up on yourselves that I'm aware of. I haven't gotten any emails that yet, you know, you're pushing up daisies somewhere. And in this, in, in this timeline, you guys, if you haven't noticed, because the way the ascension increases, like multiplication, you're not getting the opportunity to start over here. You're not getting the baby body to forget and try again from a new platform of awareness. You're starting where you left off. Probably most of you have had at least eight lifetimes already. Think about it. Different jobs, different relationships. It feels like a whole other lifetime, doesn't it? And the reason why is because as the ascension increases, we don't get to take the breaks. If we really, really need a break, we'll have a near-death experience. If we really, really need a break, we'll get a disease for a while, okay? Or we'll get put in jail or we'll, something will happen in a way where we can take a break here. But it's just a break. If you notice, the movie starts again. And you are here to create your own movie. And like I said in Second Sunday, do you like watching your own movie? Is it thrilling or is it just cringe where you stop looking at your own screen and start looking at the little screen to see if you can find someone else's life who's more exciting than yours. I, I know for a fact that some of you, because I have done this, have watched hours of TikTok watching people rearrange their fridges because it's more exciting than my life in that time. You, you can get obsessed with it. Now, Part of me is inspired to go clean out my fridge. And part of me is like, I'd rather watch them, right? And now I understand why my son watches YouTube and watches other kids play video games because it's way more exciting than the way he plays. And this is the final trap so that you won't come home. Is your, your story gets smaller and smaller. Your life gets smaller and smaller with every heartbreak. And now you're a plant that is in a small little pot, hoping to get either water or not overwatered too much and hoping not to get neglected and hoping to be in a little bit of sun so you can exist while you watch other people live and you go to your job and you eat your food and you have your experiences that you make sure keep you in that pot right? So think about that. Think about where we're heading as a collective. We are living such small, mediocre lives that we get so much joy and excitement for watching other people do really mundane things. 
Like I'm gonna spend 40 minutes watching this lady decorate her Christmas tree. <gasps> wow, it's a much better tree than I have. Her budget is way bigger. I'd much rather watch hers. Maybe I won't even pull mine out this year because what's the point? And you know what? It's not fair, <clears throat> right? So think about that. Think about what you are doing in your life, not what you're wanting and you're desiring, not what you think you're going to do tomorrow when your procrastination wears off, but what you're doing right now, because you came here to like your movie. You came here to like the character, regardless of what she gone through. As long as you got grit and gumption, you could damn near die and it would be an amazing movie. But if you do nothing, right, except bitch and moan and complain, right, or you do nothing but study spirituality, guess what? You're going to have to do this again. And there's not going to be very much light if you have to do this again from a lower dimension. Because as the light increases in the higher realms of Earth as she's going through her expansion, she is also zip driving the third D, which means it is compressing. It is pressurizing. And as it pressurizes, everything is going to get real claustrophobic in there and quite uncomfortable. Because when you're pressurized, you are touching the problem. You can feel it. It's uncomfortable. And 2,500 years of pain. Are, is coming in to be served up for the third dimensional choice, which means people who are choosing to stay in a small pot with a lot of potential, right? Are you a lot of potential in a small pot, right? Because if you are growing, then it doesn't matter what you're growing, you're growing out of that. And even if you have to be a rookie and a beginner and you don't know anything and your spiritual practices aren't working, and you can't make money in the fifth dimension, it's still a better place to be. Guarantee. Because you are moving into a world of win-win if you can let go of what you believe you don't have right now. You are supposed to arrive naked and new. Not bags full of money and a perfect partner on your arm. Right, It's very rare that you're going to show up in a new world with a twin. Now, some of you will. If you've both been doing the work, you'll have a playmate built in with you. Some of us have each other, right? Hey, I'm a butterfly. I know you're 7,000 miles away, but I got wings now. Haven't you noticed that your best, best, best mates don't live in your zip code? It's because you knew you were going to have wings. You knew it. And if they lived too close to you while you were a caterpillar, you would have got so comfortable with them, you never would have gone anywhere. So you need wings to be with your mates. You need gumption and courage and bravery to build this playground. And it's going to be built out of all of your suffering, not your strength, not your stuff you do really well. It's not your spiritual practices that are going to get this new world built. It's your ability to hold space for the darkest parts of yourself and bring them home, which means that you have to reconcile the parts of you that hate you. And that is some scary shit. <laughs> I've been meeting them all year. And it, this by far, I have feel like I've had some tough years since I have moved further and further. This by far has been the toughest year, but I'm changing my pot. <laughs> I'm getting into a bigger pot, which means that there is a time where I'm uprooted completely and feeling very vulnerable and naked and in lack. And as I'm being repotted into a bigger plant, I don't know how to be there. I don't know how to do it yet. There's a lot of uncertainty. People have disappeared from my reality and new people have shown up that I don't know how to love yet, right? So it's okay, wherever you are, right? Because if you can hear my voice, you're probably 
at the final end of this bridge. Now think about this in one way. We are quantum beings and we know that the beginning is not at the end, it's at the zero point. And so the bridge, although you believe you've been walking like this, remember Abraham Hicks is here. I hope to be at least here, right? <laughs> Responsibility, the ability to respond. We are not walking in a linear fashion to the end of this. We are meeting ourselves in the middle at the zero point. And when you are meeting yourself in the middle at the zero point, there are going to be times where you are heavier in the light and the dark begins to fall. There is times where the darkness is moving closer to the light and it is taking up all of the attention. So it's like this until you get to this. And when you create that zero point, you will have enough dark integrated, enough darkness working with your light, your, you know, your manipulator turns into a mentor, right? You assign the darkness, you promote them into, from the suicide squad into superheroes. You challenge them through love. I'm not leaving. I'm not abandoning you no matter what. They'll test you, they'll poke you, and they'll finally say, she's being consistent. She's not abandoning me for some new dude, right? She's not forgetting about me when she's got money or her tummy's full. She's here. All right, fine. I wanted to come home anyways. I was bluffing. And as you meet yourself in the middle, that is where the zero point energy is, aka your pineal gland your kundalini will move into a higher vibrational space of alignment with all of your energy. And you will begin to create a new world from your center point, not the end. This is why every single time you guys have gotten to the end, we call it finish line failure in quantum, fit, in quantum fitness, because every single time you felt like you were getting to the finish line, the bottom fell out, okay? Every time you were about to achieve some greatness, Something happened. Here's why. This one was for me. The reason why every single time your definition definition of success was about to manifest, you got ghosted or the money got pulled away or you got sick in the last hour because you actually finished the finish line of meeting your darkest point. You were here. And so you met her or him, all right? That's a compliment. Now you looked at it as your whole life shattered because that darkness went all over you. And then you had to start again, but you started again with that darkness. And now you are more light and you were never supposed to succeed with your ego desiring from lack. Never. You were never supposed to hit the home run from pain, right? You were supposed to hit the home run because there was nine of you integrated into knowing who you were. Need, want, is. Think about this. Let's look at this bridge. Need is here. Is is here. Want is in the middle, and that is the inner child. So every single time you've done this, all you've had to do is find the inner child to rebalance you. You've been arguing with your spouse and your baby in the corner is Googling and you just can't be mad, right? You're, you're so pissed that you just stubbed your toe and then someone says something funny and you can't stop laughing because your inner child will turn all of your mess into a masterpiece. That's what the child is here to do for you. It's your mediator. It's your methadone. It's actually your security blanket that you think you need a security blanket to protect the child. The child is your security blanket. Your child is your pause. Your child is your artist. Your, your child is the only one that can go into the darkest places and love the beast within you and the lightest places and understand the conversations with God. It is your inner child that will finish this walk with you. And if you have imprisoned her or him to make a living 
or you have been hiding too much in the spiritual realms and avoiding your own darkness, your child's been suffering. And your child is spending more time and custody with your human ego because the child doesn't care about spiritual study. It cares about what it can do with it. How can I play with this? How can I make this into something? But the pain in you says, we got to study one more, one more time. And here I am teaching another class, right? But at the same time, in non-duality, it gives you the platform of playing with everything. So non-duality class this year is not about studying spiritual concepts. It is about how do I play in shit? How do I play in the mud? How do I play with nothing? You used to know you could build a castle out of couch cushions. You forgot. You forgot that that's actually how you build the new world. But your child remembers. And you may have to find them buried alive somewhere, but you will find them. Because as you get excited and get hope and start moving forward and you smack into some pain instead, that's what you're there to find. All right. So this is really where we are at as a collective, at least I believe the collective that has been walking the walk, right? Now, it's time for us to talk the talk, <clears throat> right? It's time for us to speak. Your voice holds your greatest power, but it also tells your greatest weakness. And if you guys have been on tour with us, we have the miracle technology. And in our biohacking centers, we use the miracle technology to do a seven generation voice clearing. All right. And in this seven generation voice clearing that we do, we can purify the karmic thread in your voice. Okay. Because your voice has highs and lows, right? you know, G minor and all these little things that are vibrating and we can decode it and see where your shadow is in your own voice. We can also see where your power is. And with an affirmation that you create, right? We'll put it into the miracle technology, which is scalar energy, and it will vibrate purity and clarification of your truth. And it will play it back to you, not in your affirmation because your ego doesn't believe you, but in a binarial annoying beats. If you guys were on tour with us in 2018 in Miami, we were in the big pink quartz crystal room, right? And, and we were doing a group binarial affirmation of the word yes. And it was like nails on a chalkboard. Because that's what it sounds like when it, the ego hears its own truth. All right. And we use that in our biohacking process to help basically accelerate this expansion. Because when you say yes and when you ask, it is given. But if you are not in a vibrational alignment with your own yes, then you will hear no. And when you hear no, you will either drop out or you will say challenge accepted. I'm just here to pick up one of my lost souls in the word no, in the pain, in the shit. And as soon as I pick them up, we're going to say yes. After the dentist, we get the ice cream, right? The child is ready. The child is saying, I know the way. It's not going to make sense to you. It's not a linear expression. It's where we meet in the middle. And so if you feel like you're going 10 steps back, then you're actually heading in the right direction in non-duality because 10 steps back is where you left a piece of yourself. 10 steps forward, 10 steps back, you'll eventually find yourself in the middle. If you've noticed, if you've ever recovered from something, let's say in childhood, you weren't allowed to have sugar or you weren't allowed to have friends. Notice how you had to go full crazy when you got freed. You had to eat a bunch of sugar or you had to have a lot of sex, or you had to have a lot of freedom if you were in religion, right? Notice how you went from the seven deadly sins to the absence of seven dead, dead, deadly sins when you went on the spiritual journey. You were eating, 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 and then you got, you know, you, you found God and you stopped eating. 
So you have to go from one extreme to the other in the awakening process, center point. Your zero point is where you are heading and it isn't forward and it isn't back. So if you're back, moving back, you're where you're supposed to be. And if you're moving forward, that's where you're supposed to be. You see, so you are already in non-duality, 100%. If you just lost something major, it is because you're going to find a piece of you. If you just lost something that the ego has been wanting its whole life, it took you back to the scene of a trauma so that you could find yourself. If you are sitting in lack right now and you don't know how you're going to survive, there's a part of you that knows. There's a part of you like, we've been here for a thousand years. And if you're nice to me, I'll show you how to get out of here, right? We know how to go without. We can hibernate in this energy. This is easy. We don't know what that safe, loving house feels like. We know what living under the house feels like. With no food. Remember, the analogy that I've given you guys for years is that you, you know, you go to a desert island with your best friend and, you know, the boat leaves without you and she breaks her leg and you've got to abandon her to go find help, right? 30 years later, you forgot you were looking for her and you end up on that island again, never really truly been able to be happy without her, never truly, truly ever feeling good about yourself in your tummy because some weird guilt and shame has been eating you your whole life and tainting your relationships every time you get close to love, you will not feel that until you reconnect with her. Well, that's the story of Ascension. You are here on a reconnaissance mission to find the fractal parts of your broken ass souls. And you will find those pieces, not in your loving relationships, but in the breakups, in the rock bottoms. And it will take you under for a long time. And sometimes it will be just a pickup like a daycare. But if you understand biohacking and you understand quantum physics and you understand non-duality, this is going to be a very strategic game for you moving forward. Because we are going to use every single thing that is happening for us as a shortcut. We are going to be so ahead of the game because eyes are going to be on our own papers here. We aren't going to be looking at someone, you know, refilling their fridge from Costco. And we are going to be going, why do I want to watch them do that? Oh, because my life is shit. Let me figure out how I can make my life more exciting than restocking a refrigerator. Because I would like to watch my own movie from the other side. I mean, your higher self is probably on her phone right now going, this chick ain't done nothing in five years except read spiritual knowledge. All right? Give yourself the movie you want. And no, you're not going to be good at this in the beginning. You're going to forget. It's going to hurt. You're In your darkest times, everyone will abandon you. And when everyone disappears in the darkest moments, it's because you are supposed to meet you. Look around for her. Feel the feeling that you feel of isolation and abandonment and judgment and say, oh, here you are. I'm here. I just spent five years studying all this love stuff. Let me give you some of what I just paid for. And she's going to be like, get away from me. And you're going to have to show up and you're going to have to be consistent. And you're going to be like, get away from me like a vampire in the sun. And you're going to have to stay there with her. And you will notice, because I've done this like eight times this year, that nobody shows up for you until you pick her up. Until you go, okay, the only thing I can do is sit in the dark with you. And I'll accept that we are both here and we can't go anywhere now because you're too heavy to carry. You're too negative. You're too sad. And none of my love and light jokes are working. So I will sit here in the dark with you. And if that's our life, if this is enlightenment on the other end, then, then that's it. And I surrender. And as soon as you surrender, they go, okay, is that remorse I feel for you abandoning me? I just wanted you to feel the pain I felt. Now let's get out of here. I know the way, but I just couldn't walk because my legs were broken 20,000 years ago. See, it's, it's just right when you surrender and accept it that help shows up. And it's right in that moment when you don't need it. Need, want, is. 
Isness is the completion, the knowing what you experience when you are in spiritual meditation or practice. You get it. You understand it. You feel the connection. You know that you are unified with one, you know, but you can't keep taking the mushroom to have that experience. You have to become the mushroom. All right. You have to become the Neo. You have to become the one. Right. You can't keep chasing the dopamine and oxytocin of the spiritual plant world when you are a freaking plant. Right. Yeah. Now the game is learning. The game is learning. The darkness is learning from your own weakness. It knows what you're running from. It knows what you're afraid of. And so it's using you to basically reject you. Everything that's happening on the planet is nothing more than a chess game and it ain't right and it ain't wrong. It's just a classroom designed to challenge your ability to unite with oneself. Everything in the matrix is designed to rip you away from you. Right when you start getting close to your lost soul in the, in the dark, you will be presented with a brand new relationship or a job opportunity or some cash flow so that you don't make it. So be leery of what excites you, right? Even, even back in the day, follow your highest excitement. That don't work in non-duality, guys. Because in non-duality, if you're following excitement instead of going into the dark, you could be just chasing a high that is leading you away from where you were heading. And that is going to leave you in a longer path. Okay? Take the path of least resistance, not to what feels like the ultimate yes. Now, how do you know the difference? I'm going to end with this. How do you know the difference when you are integrating into your darkness and your and yourself when what you manifest doesn't change you? Okay? The new job, if it's going to change your life, it's the devil in disguise. Okay? The big pile of money that you're praying for, if it shows up, it would change your life. It ain't really going to show up that way. Because you're here to change your life and you will manifest a vibrational match of what you are, right? Ultimately, it's just, I am a child and you manifest a playground, but it doesn't change the fact that you can play anywhere. I love myself. So manifesting a partner in my 10th hour is not actually what I've been asking for. It's actually going to distract me from picking up my child from daycare because you got a cute butt and now I'm looking at you, right? So watch your finish line distractions right now. If it feels too good to be true right now, if it feels like, oh God, thank you. Oh my gosh, yes, this is exactly what I've been praying for. I've been asking. You're probably gonna get ghosted in about three weeks and you're going to go into a dark night of your soul, but higher self will say challenge accepted. We'll use that dark night of the soul to find our lost pieces. So <laughs> it's a win-win, guys. It's a win-win. You can't get this wrong. So if you chase your addiction, it will lead you back to your pain. And if you chase your darkness, that's the shortcut. If you really want to biohack your life, chase your darkness. Love it, get to know it, feed it, hold it, be consistent, keep your effing word, show up, reparent it, and then everything will grow out of that. We build a new world from the reparented child, right? That's how we do it. And if you're like me, higher self doesn't even give you the distractions anymore, just takes everything away. So that you're going, well, I guess we're just here. Okay. But we're not waiting. We're practicing, preparing, and playing. Right? We're getting stronger. We're learning how to use these freaking wings. Can't get off the ground yet, but I know I got them. Okay? Don't have many people helping around, but every the potential is all vibrating. And this is where we are. And if you are in a position to teach, or if you have a practice right now, then I would suggest including non-duality 
into your practices with your students. Because leading them into the light is actually leading them into the dark. Because when you open up the gates of heaven, you are unlocking the gates of hell because as above is below. If you're taking that plant medicine to go through your ego all at once, guess what? Not all at once. You're just unlocking all the doors and you're going to meet them for a long time in the shadows. And it's going to be funny. So if you want to do this the right way, integrate, get to know, and do it again and again. I would not rip off this Band-Aid because that will put you into the loony bin. You will not be able to see, uh, you won't be able to see clearly. So take it one chunk at a time. Don't try to shortcut by taking spirit medicine because you're gonna unlock too much of your own hell at once and you're gonna be too high and that's gonna take you too low. Your best place to be here is moderate. The moderate will create the abundance and freedom. All right, just like we've been telling our kids our, for their whole life, you got to crawl before you walk, right? Because then you're going to feel confident with yourself. The rules really haven't changed, guys. The algorithms are just getting more intelligent. And how sad of a life that we have that we would rather watch organization of a pantry for hours than living our own lives. Think about it. All right, so we start non-duality on the 28th of December. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys through a reparenting time travel process that I discovered and had to use on myself as like a last resort, okay? And I've done it about three different times on myself now. And I'm starting to have memories of my first few years where before I could only remember like age like four up like I could remember my birth experience, but then there was like this weird haze. And I was like, whoa, what happened to me? And I've been afraid because I couldn't remember all these years. But let me tell you what I found instead. I found out I was happy. I found out that I had a home. I found out my parents were actually happy for a few years. You know how sometimes when good things happen to you guys, you don't remember them, but you remember the bad stuff? You know how like a hundred things could go right and one thing goes wrong and that's what you fixate on? Well, I had three full years and actually the home that I lived in, my father built from scratch when he was preaching and running the church and my mom and dad were happy. And so why would I keep that information? Because it's light and light is information it doesn't have gravity or density to it. And I had abundance. The poor kid had abundance. And I didn't even know that. So I'm going to take you into this process that kind of found me on this walk. And I found those three years and it has completely changed my idea of my entire life. So there might be things that are not that dark that you need to find as well. Because it's a lot easier to focus on the problem here than it is on what you actually have who you are. All right. So I'm, I'm so excited for this. Um, it's a hypnosis and I don't need you to be here and it's guided and I'm going to take you through it. And that's going to be our first class before we go into the next year, because we want a death experience and this resurrection. We want some of this Christ conscious Jesus stuff to come through right now. This would be real nice. So there's parts of you that need to die and integrate back in. And there's parts of you that are ready to resurrect. And those parts of you are so ready. And the parts of you that are still dying slowly and possessing you through triggers, they are literally having a tantrum asking to be loved. All right. So until then, if any of you guys are joining me, you I've been telling you to reach out because we've we're getting the pages up on the website, but in the meantime, if you're joining the class, you can reach out to me directly um, and you can find me on Messenger, on Facebook or Quantum Jess22 at Gmail or through the website, uh, JessGallstrom.com. It should be posted very soon under non-duality masterclass. Um, the rest of you guys that have already registered, I've got you. You guys will be put in the queue in the links and we are ready to roll then. 
And those of you guys who are kind of struggling with your finances right now, keep in mind that there's probably a version of you, right, waiting to be recovered that you're searching for the abundance while it's in the dark. It's in the darkness that you're trying to get yourself out of right now. Go all the way into the darkness and find your frequencies of money, which is, I am safe to be me. These are your four money frequencies. I am deserving just as I am. I am worthy of all the abundance here, good, bad, or ugly. And I'm safe to be me and I am free to be me, which means I am free to be the darkest parts of me and the lightest lights. And I am also here to be one hot mess of that mixture. I'm also the child of those two crazy parents, the dark and the light. And I am an artist and an artist is here to create out of any medium, okay? So keep that in mind. If you're wanting to join us and you're like, ooh, right? Then your, your non-duality class right now is in your own darkness that you're avoiding. And I'll probably see you guys in about three days if you go down deep into the dark to find yourself, then I'll see you in class. Otherwise, go use your alchemy classes again. Use them. You paid for them. They're yours. Find those aspects of you. They are in all of your triggers. The parts of you that you're avoiding are in the triggers. Okay? That's where they are. The triggers, the fears, the worries, that's where they are. So it's really easy to find. All you have to do is put yourself out into the world and you'll find them. All right, guys, I will see you soon. Thank you so much for joining me, whether it's been one year, three years, five years, 10 years. I'm still gonna keep walking. I truly believe that non-duality will be my last master class because what's after that? Nothing. I mean, hopefully there won't be any more classes and we can just play in non-duality together because we'll all have wings, right? So this will probably be my last master class because 2023 is the fundamental part of the new world build out. So we got to get busy living. Otherwise, get busy dying. Or just go TikTok for 20 years. All right? Otherwise, we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.